<clears throat> All righty, folks. Good evening. As you know, my name is Deanna Woolfolk. I am the University Recruiting Associate with Uncued. And thank you so much for joining us this evening um, as we discuss navigating the internship search. And so, um, First and foremost, I hope that everyone is doing well, um, that everyone is doing okay in this time. Um, of course, we will be covering some things regarding COVID-19, but you know, more, first and foremost, we definitely wanna make sure that everyone is okay. Um, and we thank you guys so much for taking your evening um, and listening to us chat. Um, and so without further ado, I would really like to go ahead and hear some introductions so we can start with you, Cynthia. Okay, perfect. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Cynthia Yin. Um, I'm currently a backend software engineer at a company called Cloudera based in the Bay Area. Um, I've been working here for about one and a half years. I joined straight out of undergrad. Um, and my undergrad was at Stanford University. Um, I, my bachelor's was in computer science with a focus on information um, and my past internship experience includes uh, Juniper Networks which is kind of like um, kind of like a networking company um, also based in the Bay Area and then I also interned at Amazon Music in San Francisco. Awesome. Cool hey everyone my name is Celine Yan and I'm currently a junior at Northeastern University. Uh, I'm studying computer science and design which is a combined major so that's like 70% of the curriculum in CS and then 70% of the curriculum in design. Um, I'm currently doing um, a product design internship at Drift. So they are kind of like a local Boston startup that uh, specializes in chatbots and conversational marketing. So being able to design for their product, um, especially towards AI is really awesome. And um, this summer I'm gonna be at Facebook um, doing product design. So fingers crossed uh, that will be an internship. So fingers crossed that nothing happens to it, but we will see. Um, my past experience uh, has honestly um, been kind of like a journey. So I studied computer science in high school in New York City, and I went into college thinking, okay, I'm going to be a software engineer. So uh, that's how I took on CS as my major uh, in college. And I did a couple of internships um, within the software engineering uh, space, and I realized I was always more interested in Kind of HTML, CSS, front end, um, I never really understood why. So when I took my first design class in college, that's when I realized, oh wait, like I'm really interested in uh, user interface, user experience, so UI, UX, and now I'm doing product design. So really fortunate to be able to work on my passions. Awesome. You guys have really impressive work history. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us today. Um, and so Celine, you kind of uh, just touched on it, but if you ladies could both uh, talk to us about, um, you know, just about your intro to tech. Um, did you always want to get into t the tech industry? Um, and what was your major? I mean, you guys both kind of shared that already, but were there any specific student organizations or teams that you leaned on for support? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can, I can go first. Um, so I was always interested in STEM growing up. Um, I actually um, intended on doing something more along the lines of like, so I really liked physics in high school. Um, I had an awesome physics teacher. So when I started college, I actually wanted to go into electrical engineering. Um, and I actually declared electrical engineering, and then I realized that I liked more of the software side of the major, so it made just more sense for me to switch to computer science to be able to take those courses. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of student organizations, I think um, obviously like resources are going to vary per college or university, but for me, what I really, I was involved in um, SWE, Society of Women Engineers, um, at Stanford all four years of my undergrad. Um, and that is, you know, that, that's, that's not just CS, that's, you know, I was able to meet people and be friends with people who are, you know, doing chemical engineering, bioengineering, things like that, which I thought was a really cool way of, you know, getting different perspectives so that I'm not just like, you know, thinking about CS all the time. And, you know, having started in um, electrical engineering, that kind of made sense for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there were a lot of other organizations as well that a lot of my peers were part of, uh, like Women in Computer Science, a lot of, you know, CS department focused things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think just, you know, building, having that community as well as, you know, having the academic support was, was a really good experience for me. Awesome. How about you, yeah. Celine? 
Yeah, for me, um, I guess I have a different background. So I grew up in New York City and more of like um, a Chinese American neighborhood. So growing up, I would say um, just being, uh, just growing up in a more immigrant facing neighborhood, uh, I didn't really know what STEM was growing up. So all throughout like elementary, middle school, like uh, it was just more like um, English and math for me. And I never really envisioned going into tech when I was growing up. Um, I would say I kind of stumbled upon doing computer science in high school when I took a mandatory uh, like intro to computer science class uh, for one semester when I was a sophomore. And to be honest, I honestly disliked that class. Uh, it was just a really different way of thinking. And I kind of struggled in terms of academics for that class. But um, just after speaking to a couple of upperclassmen in my high school, they really recommended that I go pursue like a second semester of the same intro class. And so um, I learned that that second intro class was more practical. So that's when I learned Python. That's when I learned HTML, CSS. And that was more reflective of just the software engineering space. Or so it was more like for high schoolers to grasp. And so I would say like that's when I started getting more interested towards front end development because it was just playing around with HTML, CSS and being able to build something and that you could visually see. Uh, that to me was really amazing and all the other subjects that kind of I went for like physics or math or English they didn't really seem like viable uh, career options for me so I guess I just stumbled upon doing computer science um, I took classes all the way to junior and senior year where um, I was really fortunate to have a high school that um, has a really strong computer science curriculum so they offered um, software um, sorry software development um, computer graphics and computer systems which I took as a senior in high school and I I would I would be honest here like I also struggled in those classes because none of those were designed or uh, front-end facing but it was just more of exploring all the different fields within computer science that I could before going into college so I would say yeah definitely was somewhat uh, luck related for me okay awesome thank you for your honesty there um, now how did you guys go about finding your internships? Did you guys lean in on your career centers? Was it independent search um, through a networking opportunity? Um, you can just kind of share from either one internship or several. <clears throat> um, I can go first. <laughs> so uh, I would say I started, I was, okay, so my first uh, specialized internship in the software engineering space was when I was a software engineering intern at Morgan Stanley. So that's one of the big bank firms <clears throat> uh, within the nation. So um, before then, I know that I've done a lot of volunteer work before that. And um, I did a couple of non-paid internships within my Chinatown community. So really giving back to like the grassroots community. It wasn't anything technical related. It was more of just understanding what was happening within the communi community, like gentrification, uh, just like um, health issues going on. And so I would say, although that didn't really relate to what I'm doing today, it was definitely a strong foundation for me to just build off of my skills in networking and talking to different people. And even though like volunteering, you don't really see that there are a lot of benefits to it um, in terms of like monetary value, it's still uh, really valuable to just be able to talk to different people and know how to engage with just different communities. And that's also what really helped me build empathy and just my job search and just what I'm looking for and to build a really strong value that I align myself with. So really knowing what teams I want to go for or what companies I want to apply to, I think that was really helped, like what grounded me in my vision on just pursuing internships. And in terms of actually landing to more of the software engineering uh, internships and product design internships, I would say a lot of it is through independent search. So um, I know that I've just been looking at um, different job, um, what is it called, like applications online, and just really looking at what uh, responsibilities they want out of their interns. And so basing off of just my skills and my portfolio, for example, like really looking at that and then um, just applying online and also a lot of in-person networking. So really reaching out to recruiters, really getting to their faces and being like, hey, like I'm really interested in this position, was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about the applicant you're looking for. Um, and so I would say it's definitely a lot of just um, being like putting yourself out there and just really talking to people. 
absolutely. Um, so for me, um, so I, so again, I did two internships. So my first one at Juniper Networks. Um, so I like heavily relied on um, kind of like job boards specific for Stanford students. Um, so we at Stanford, we use um, like Handshake and Piazza, um, which I know is common at other schools. And a lot of companies would look for students specifically through that, which I found to be more um, beneficial than just like standing at a career fair for hours on end uh, or like applying online and not knowing, you know, you have like a massive um, like hiring pool, things like that. So, you know, really just trying to find ways to get yourself in front of that opportunity, whether that's like, um, you know, going to an info session that a company is holding on campus or, um, you know, going to, so at Stanford, we had like more specific career fairs that were like entrepreneurship focused or like, um, you know, like just different um, topics. So things like that, where it's, you know, you are able, as Celine said, like able to, you know, speak to people one-on-one -on -one, or, you know, just that kind of like more targeted um, opportunity, I think was um, helpful for me and like advice that I gave to other people. So yeah, my Juniper uh, internship was through um, Handshake. I actually was recruited for Cloudera through Piazza. Um, and then for my Amazon internship, I got that opportunity through the Grace Hopper um, conference. Um, so for people who don't know what that is, what that is um, it's an annual um, tech conference for women. Um, and a lot of companies attend, a lot of students attend. Um, so that was kind of where I got that from. Awesome. And before we um, continue, guys, just for those watching, um, we do have a Q&A section at the bottom. You can just go ahead and click on that um, and submit your questions. Um, we'll, we'll go through our initial uh, selection of questions first, and then for anything we didn't cover, we'll get to that toward the end. Just want to let everyone know that. Um, and just, you know, you guys are in the tech industry, um, you know, in thinking about my internship experience as well, um, I would say I leaned in a lot on some of the programs my state had. So I live in New York. Um, and so I got my job experience um, uh, starting with a summer youth employment program. Um, and then from there, utilizing uh, New York City Ladders for Leaders um, and that was like my first internship at Estee Lauder as an archival intern. Um, and it wasn't something that I necessarily wanted to do, but I knew that um, it would look really good. And I got that my senior year in high school. Um, so that way, by the time I got to college, literally every semester, I was able to land a role. And um, to be very honest with you, I leaned in on my career center, um, but so much because I knew that every student would be looking there and the career fairs for me as someone who is an introvert um, it was very hard for me to stand out in a crowd at that point um, because my school Seton Hall University is is rather large and so even when I did go to the career fairs I felt like there were a herd of students and you know me trying to sell myself when you know everyone wanted their chance it was really hard for me and so that's when I knew I had to kind of take the search into my own hands and so I did look at the smaller companies the companies that some people may have not looked at so there are websites like idealist um, that post a lot of roles in nonprofit um, and then that's where I got my internship at with AIDS Walk, which was amazing. Um, but being able to put yourself out there and know to, to get creative. I think that's something that I, I definitely learned to be creative and not be afraid to speak toward the other things that you're doing. So for those who don't have the internship experience that they think may be enough to land them another internship, right? It's being able to say, well, hey, I'm president of my honor society on campus, or I participate as a treasurer in Black Student Union, like being able to hone in on the skills that you utilize um, there in school also mean a lot. Um, so just hearing, you know, how you guys kind of looked into your internships is, it's very interesting because there are so many resources that I know that some students don't know about. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, now, how did you guys decide to intern at those select companies? Were there any, was there anything specific about the companies that you uh, interned at that you felt like that's where I want to be? Um, so for example, for me, um, and I give this example all the time, 
I, there was an entertainment position that I really wanted for a really large entertainment group in New York City. And I told myself one day I'd get it and I'd apply every semester and would never get it. And then when I studied abroad, I was able to actually land the internship and do my interviews while abroad in Spain. And so um, for me, it was more of like the entertainment. This is what everybody's getting into. Who doesn't want to be around TV shows and celebrities and things like that? So that's something that I had to learn. For me, wasn't wasn't what I needed um, as an introvert. I, I didn't excel there. So, but um, just thinking about your internship experience, was there anything that really sold you on the companies that you interned with? Um, I can go first. Um, so for me, um, so I chose to intern with Juniper. Um, what really attracted me was the nature of the work that they were doing um, because that was, um, like around the time where I, so I guess to give context, the summer before that, um, I had done electrical engineering research um, at the, at Stanford's medical school. And I had actually, I actually um, have uh, like, I had research background before that. Um, but after that summer, I was kind of like, I want to try something different to see um, what I like. So, you know, I, that's why I really wanted to do an industry internship. Um, and that was kind of around the time where I was like doing that transition from electrical engineering to computer science. So for me, it was perfect because the work that I was doing was software engineering, but it was at a company that also worked on the electrical engineering side. Um, so there was a good company fit there. Um, when I was thinking about my Amazon internship, I was kind of, um, you know, looking at a different aspect of uh, my career path, which was what kind of company do I want to work for? Do I want to work for um, like a medium sized company, which is what uh, Juniper Networks was? Um, like, let me see what it'll, what it's like working at a much larger company uh, like Amazon. Um, so that was kind of the rationale going into my Amazon internship. And then for like when I joined Cloudera, um, I, again, it was very much a good fit in terms of um, what I was interested in working on. Um, we're an enterprise data company. So having studied um, like data and information in college, um, that was really great. And then um, something that I really liked and still do about my company is um, our culture, just the people um, that I met during the interview process. Um, I think it's really important to, you know, like who you're working with. Um, so that was, you know, a really important factor for me. And I think it was a good choice. Um, you know, I still see that in our culture today. So. <clears throat> Yeah, I think um, for me, it was definitely, I, I would say I started my career search pretty early on. So I think I started um, kind of hustling when I was a junior in high school, which I definitely know uh, is like a really privileged state to be in. So being in New York City, there's definitely a lot of opportunities that are present here. So uh, I would say when I first started out, um, and this was kind of getting into um, my internships in the Chinatown community, and then later on in Morgan Stanley, it was more of like, um, just seeing if I could get any opportunity. So really keeping my um, kind of like interest low and like really seeing if I could just be able to score any work experience out there just so that I could familiarize myself with the work industry, the expectations they have, and just overall be able to have something on my resume for hopefully like my next internship. And um, I would say after Morgan Stanley, uh, that's when I kind of started realizing like, okay, this position isn't really for me. Um, and then I then looked for roles that were more um, people facing and more design focused. And um, that this was kind of in the period of right after my freshman year of college. So um, during that time, I don't know how many people in the audience are freshmen, but uh, I can definitely empathize with how hard it is to find an internship when you're at that kind of like age. Um, so, oh wait, okay. To backtrack, I got Morgan Stanley right out of high school because I did have a partnership between my high school with Morgan Stanley in the city. So that was a really amazing opportunity and really selective. Um, but after my freshman year in college, that was when I was trying to apply for design roles and I really couldn't get any. And so obviously my drive here is that I want something that's more focused on my academic interest in design. So when I tried applying, um, I was told like, okay, I didn't really have a portfolio that was strong enough for any internship. So then I then was really flexible in just finding any role that could leverage my skills in CS, but also still be really people-facing. And that's when I landed a role in just teaching 
um, this summer boot camp for middle school girls on how to code. And in that opportunity, like I learned a tremendous amount. Like I was able to apply my skills in Python and Java. I was able to work with kids and really understand how they thought and what their thought processes was. And um, being able to take that experience and then apply it to my later internships in design was definitely really valuable. So it's kind of like climbing like up the ladder of just, you're, you always know kind of what your interests are. And so you really wanna be flexible in where you wanna go. And I realized I didn't share uh, all of my internships, but um, design wise, I first did a co-op, um, a UX design co-op at Zipcar. And then I did a product design internship at Microsoft and now I'm at Drift and then the summer at Facebook. So don't feel intimidated, but <laughs> uh, essentially how I even got to all those positions was because I was just really flexible and open. And my drive was always towards, okay, like how can I really um, land a position that I know I'm gonna be happy with in the future? And so when I was going for, um, I would say definitely like Facebook and Drift, my, my whole, ethos was basically um, I want to be able to work on a project that was social good focused and so I landed something at Drift that was AI but we definitely had a lot of aspects of community in mind um, when designing and also the design team I worked with was awesome um, and then for Facebook it was definitely um, I think I was scored like a gold mine because I'm able to intern the summer at their social good team which is really um, I would say like really hard to get so being able to just know and identify where your passions are uh, definitely will help you drive towards, I guess, like where you're applying and what you want to do. Yeah. And <laughs> speaking to like the flexibility point, larger companies, when they do internship programs, um, any event that it's a bit more of a general role, still go for it, right? Because you never know. So for example, there was a, an internship I took that I did not get a lot of a huge workload in what I was hired for as an intern, but there were a lot of opportunities on the video side that I could be a part of because I was there. I was already immersed in the program. And so being able to dibble and dabble in that, you know, it helped me because I got to see different departments and how they worked. And a lot of internships, that's kind of what it is, right? I feel like when you do have an internship experience, you can see different departments, how things work, and you do have the ability to have, you know, and help that, that way. So I do think it's really important to definitely be flexible and know that while it may not be the exact title of what you want as a full-time role, um, it can lead to that, right? We want, our, we want to get our foot in the door, um, mm -hmm. but we'll save all of the rest of that for advice and, and suggestions. Um, but I do want to know what sorts of things did you guys work on in your internships? Um, what do you find to have been most memorable of, of a project that you worked on? Um, and what did you, did you feel like your schoolwork kind of prepared you for that? Or were there a lot of things you kind of just had to figure out? Um, I can talk about what I did at Amazon Music. Um, so I was building collaborative playlists um, for Amazon Music. So, um, you know, being able to share playlists with your friends, um, you know, editing them together, um, things like that. Um, so what was really neat about my internship at Amazon was um, actually being able to be exposed to other teams, I think. Um, so, you know, that's like, talking to product management, talking to um, people on the UI side, talking to um, the teams that would end up, you know, building this out for like mobile versus like, um, you know, desktop, Amazon music, things like that. Um, Cause I was on the, the back end side. So for me, that was really eye opening to seeing, you know, everything that kind of goes into building a, a good product. Um, and it also kind of opened me up to product management as well, which is um, kind of like something that I always keep in the back of my mind in terms of like where I want my career to go. Um, I think that school did not, you know, directly prepare me for, you know, what industry work is like, um, but, you know, it definitely gave me the foundations to be able to do well. Um, so yeah, it was a lot, I think, and I think this applies to a lot of jobs, a lot of students, you know, a lot of it is, you know, learning on the job, leaning on mentors for advice, leaning on your teammates, leaning on other interns um, to kind of just understand how industry works. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say I would echo the same, um, same mindset and also learning. So 
I can pull in one project that I worked on that was really memorable and it was at my first uh, UX design internship. So that was at Zipcar. And coming on um, as an intern who never worked in design in the industry before, it was really nice to uh, be welcomed with open arms by the senior design team at Zipcar. And so uh, I had a lot of questions going in on like, okay, like what is um, your standard practice or what is your workflow or like how do I even use this tool you guys all use called Sketch? And so um, being able to ramp up within the first couple of months uh, was really awesome. And I guess they saw how quick I picked up on new concepts. And then the project that they gave me that was a big rock project um, that lasted all the way until the end of my internship was essentially designing or redesigning their entire um, United Kingdom, specifically London, uh, pre-sale site. And so pre-sale site is basically their flagship product um, and how they market Zipcar to just uh, people who haven't become Zipcar members yet. So it was a pretty big deal. It was around 12 pages that I had to redesign. And I was one of the main designers that were was leading the project since the other designers had to take care of um, other projects in the company. But i um, definitely echoing Cynthia's point that um, when I took on that project, it was a lot of communication um, with just like product managers and with um, my engineers and how to build a website. And then also I'm um, really working with marketing team and um, the United Kingdom like head of marketing, which was really crazy. Um, so I sat in a lot of meetings and I would say like my academic experience doesn't, um, it's helped me in regards of just um, design thinking as well as um, being able to produce designs that are a bit more technically feasible. So because I have a computer science background, um, I can really think of, um, I guess, within my designs, I'm conscious of how long it might take for my engineers to build. So in that sense, um, academia really did help, but it was a lot of just learning on the job, a lot of communication, a lot of making sure that um, if you know you can't get something in on time that you communicated well with your team. Um, and also just that experience of multidisciplinary, like you're really working with people of different backgrounds and strengths and you come to realize that um, sometimes you may need to lean on the product manager to take care of a lot of um, just the business and the goals and really driving a project forward and then working with engineers and knowing that they can take care of the technical back end that I don't really need to think a lot about that. And then for me, just uh, it helped me build confidence in knowing that they were also relying on me to produce design. So it was more of like people were specialized in their role, whereas I think in the classroom setting, you're usually in a classroom with other designers, for example, or you're an engineer working with other engineers. So I would say like definitely um, echoing Cynthia's point, like work experience is just really different from academia. So I would highly encourage to just kind of be able to get an internship or even um, just work on projects on your school campus. Those are really, awesome opportunities to expand your knowledge outside of just school and it'll look really great on your resume. So uh, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> awesome. So internships usually allow you to see firsthand the work that you would be doing, um, uh, you know, assuming that you got a full-time role there. So would you say your internship experience kind of changed what you wanted to do post-college? Um, and so, for example, for me, I've been able to work nonprofit, for-profit, large company, small company, and being able to have those internships, I realized what worked for me. I, I saw the kind of space I was able to thrive in. So were there any internships that kind of shaped um, kind of what you want now or for the future? Um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head and I would definitely agree with that. I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, you know, just I kind of see internships as a way to just try out different things, um, whether that's like, you know, different areas of like tech that you want to work in, different um, types of companies. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, you know, I wanted to see what it was like working at a large company and for, you know, different people like different things um, and there's no like right answer. Um, so for me, that just didn't feel like the right fit for me. Um, so that definitely informed my full-time job search um, afterwards. So yeah, I mean, I think I kind of used internships to kind of like push me towards that, um, you know, where I wanted to go. And I would say like as a student, like I really didn't know, you know, what I wanted to do. Like it's, you're so young at that point. That's like, you have so little experience. It's like, you, how do you know what, what is out there? How do you know um, what you're going to like? So 
yeah, I think, you know, you, using the internships to, um, you know, learning from them and learning what you like about a company, about like the types of people that you like working with, um, you know, yeah. Yeah, those are all really good points. <laughs> I would definitely uh, echo the same points. Um, internships are definitely meant for just trying things out. That's why um, I'm really glad I did do Morgan Stanley. Um, definitely a lot of other interns really enjoyed the experience and uh, decided to go back or continue pursuing um, software engineering roles. But for me, it really showed me what um, where my real interests lied and what I kind of disliked about the internship. So um, being able to have those short opportunities of like four months or six months, just really um, kind of seeing what a uh, company's like, the work you're doing, the culture, again, like your team, the people there, um, definitely that helps shape um, and inform what you personally like. And in terms of just different sized companies, I would say I have some experience across smaller to medium size to um, large companies. And I think I'm still not sure exactly on what um, type of culture I enjoy the most. Um, there's definitely opportunities that you'll pick or learnings that you'll find when you do work at different companies on like, for example, how much you can change within a company. So I know like in smaller, medium sized companies, you can definitely make more waves within the company. So um, for example, at Drift, so the startup I'm at right now, I created an ERG, which is an employee resource group for just sustainability and helping other employees um, kind of think more about sustainable practices within the office. Whereas I know if I was at Microsoft or at Facebook, like for example, those ERGs would have already been there or um, there's just a lot of overhead and uh, if you're trying to make bigger waves. So these are kind of like different um, learnings that you'll have to leverage and just see what you personally like. And then um, I think one more thing is uh, location for me. So growing up in New York City, I know it's like such a big hub and a lot of people have always expressed like, oh my gosh, I wish I could work in New York City. For me, it's like different. So when I um, got to experience what it's like working on the West Coast in Seattle for Microsoft, that's when I realized like, like holy crap, like I want to be on the West Coast post-college. Um, like location seems like not that big of a deal, but honestly, um, when you're thinking about just um, moving out or like the different responsibilities um, that carry over and just um, where you want to stay in for like the next uh, five or 10 years of your life, I would say like location to me is really important. And just internships also gave me a really good sense in where I want to be, which is like in California or Seattle. So, yeah. Got it. Um, so after leaving your last internship, um, I know, Cynthia, for you, after leaving your last internship to full time, um, did you receive any feedback or advice that you helped, that you feel like kind of helped prepare you for your next role? Like any positive feedback or critiques that you felt like this is something that I want to carry on in my professional career? Um, so at Amazon, um, so Amazon is very big on their um, leadership principles. Um, they're like on Amazon's website and you can read about um, how they drive Amazon's culture. Um, so feedback was something that was um, very much a part of my um, internship, both like positive things as well as like areas of improvement. So I think that that kind of, you know, helped me see, you know, what am I good at versus, um, you know, what can I obviously focus on working on and improving. Um, so, and, you know, that, did, that varies person to person. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think for me, it was like, what are, it was kind of more of like, what should I focus on in my last couple quarters of school to really learn before I um, go full time? Like, what are the things that I should make sure that I learn? Because you won't, you know, at a, you know, you might go back in it for grad school or whatnot, but like, you know, you, you only do undergrad once kind of thing. Um, so yeah, kind of just making the most of the rest of the time that I had in school. How about you, Celine? Anything from your last or current internship that you felt like kind of helped shape you? Yeah, I would definitely say um, a lot on communication. So uh, I think I, like as a student, um, definitely I, I see this as a really awesome time to just identify any um, any areas of improvement that I have. And so uh, like Cynthia mentioned, like definitely a lot of feedback sessions or one-on-ones with my manager and my teammates have helped me grow in like tremendously. If um, So as opposed to if I was um, staying in school and like didn't go out to work, 
because I really identify just um, places of improvement that I could improve on. So um, one big example that I can think of is just how I communicate with my teammates and really identifying how um, other people like to work and how I can best be an ally for them. So that's something that I care a lot about. And so I'm very aware of that. And so now I know going into any internship opportunities, I definitely um, will communicate this to my manager and ask them to do a favor, which is to kind of see how I work with other people and give me feedback. So this is kind of personal, but at my current internship, um, my manager told me one piece of feedback that I was really grateful she told me. And she said that some of the teammates have said that um, sometimes I talk a little too much or that I should sit back and listen more as an intern. And so um, taking that feedback uh, at first initially was a little hard, but um, overall, like I really embrace feedback in general, just because I've learned that um, it's really awesome to be transparent and open and to embrace feedback from other people. Um, and definitely helps me like I don't see it myself sometimes like in the past, but definitely when someone comes up to me and is really honest about that, that's when uh, I can really grow a lot. And so definitely that's something that I've worked towards on. And then my manager has then told me um, that she's noticed a really big improvement on that. And she's, you know, like really ha happy for like my growth. So definitely just um, identifying areas of improvement. Um, there's just so much to improve about oneself. And I think as a student, like that's really awesome. If you're going into an internship opportunity, you should be able to, you know, work on these before you go into full time, or at least I believe so. Right. No, definitely. Um, and so we should definitely start our, you know, shifting the conversation to the reality right now. Um, and so everyone has been affected, uh, big or small with the, uh, figuring out the impact of COVID-19, what it has um, impacted in their lives. And so thinking about that, um, there's a lot going on now with hiring freezes, internships being rescinded. I know everyone has kind of seen um, some UX, UI interns from Google who, you know, took to LinkedIn to vent and then were able to kind of find new roles that way. Um, so you know, what advice do you have for students who um, have either had summer internships canceled or in limbo right now? Maybe I could be a student who didn't even get a chance to think about internships and now I'm, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. And if you know of any opportunities or resources um, that are still available for students who are still looking. Cynthia, I know you have one, so. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so I, I think, Celine, you probably have a lot more relevant recommendations than I do, um, but yeah, so we, so I, um, if you haven't heard of the, a platform called Jumpstart, um, so they are kind of bringing together students um, and, you know, people from the recruiting side who are still looking to hire, um, so yeah, so just, uh, I believe Jumpstart I forgot what their website is, like jumpstart.me, I think. Um, but yeah, they're a, they're a really awesome platform. Um, and yeah, Cloudera's uh, university recruiters use them. Um, so, you know, definitely, I think in general, you know, following the same advice, you know, connect with your network, um, you know, look at, look for things that are, you know, maybe like a bit, you know, not as um, out there. So um, I know Deanna mentioned earlier, kind of like a platform for kind of, Nonprofits. So the other thing that I was going to suggest is AngelList, which is um, a platform for startups who are looking for um, students to hire um, and just people to hire in general. Um, and I know that usually they have a lot more opportunities, especially later in the school year, um, because they are smaller companies. Um, definitely look for things that are offering re remote work, um, things that are kind of going to be able to carry you through this. Like my company is entirely remote right now, um, so. Yeah, I mean, don't give up, I think is, you know, you know, you, you've worked really hard to get to where you are. Um, and, you know, you, you always, everyone has a lot of great potential to land awesome opportunities. So, you know, don't let this, um, you know, impact you too much. Yeah, uh, it's definitely like a scary time period that we're all in right now, um, especially for those who are graduating seniors coming out and like looking for full-time roles. 
I've definitely heard stories of just um, full-time roles um, being rescinded or um, like a lot of hiring freezes going on. So um, definitely within the past few weeks, I have noticed that the student community is really strong in just compiling information on um, and like crowdsourcing information on companies that have gone on a hiring freeze or companies that are still hiring. So um, one resource I can point to, um, I don't have it with me right now, but it's essentially um, a student put together a GitHub page where yeah. um, it's crowdsourced data of just people um, saying like what companies have been canceled um, based on their own personal experiences and what companies are still open. Um, and so I'm going to find that I think later and just like post it in the chat, but it's a really awesome resource um, just so that you have a heads up on what companies um, you probably shouldn't be applying to right now. Um, and then also um, two other resources. I like have them written down on my notebook. Um, one of them is just taking it to LinkedIn. And so really um, making a post or just uh, reading posts on LinkedIn is definitely something that will help you a lot. Um, a lot of um, just employees and students are really active on LinkedIn right now because everyone wants to help those who have been impacted by COVID. Um, so definitely look on LinkedIn, um, make a post, try to get engagement. Um, and if you don't use LinkedIn a lot, this could be your first time just engaging with the platform. It definitely helps a lot in just networking, um, building your network, finding jobs, um, staying connected, all that good stuff. So look at that. And um, I think also one great resource is if you have Facebook, there's a lot of um, really awesome communities um, or student communities you can be a part of. So one of them is um, Hackathon Hackers, where there's a lot of students that are coming together and just, um, like I know st there are students who are planning to do something remote together, like work on a really big project together over the summer um, because they just got laid off from their internship. And so really being flexible and adaptable right now is I think what would be key. Um, and also don't give up on um, applying to internships and jobs. Um, but uh, when the time comes and like you definitely don't want to spend the summer doing nothing, I would rather like um, work on a remote project with other um, motivated students than just kind of spend the summer and like let it go by. So definitely look at that. And then one last thing is there's a lot of COVID-19 related hackathons coming up or that are popping up. So I know one just ended today and that was by uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Microsoft, and WHO, but um, there's also a lot of smaller ones out there that definitely you could leverage your engineering background right now and just work on a project there. Um, you could also continue it for like future pandemics or whatever. So I think like just be creative um, and just be able to put your skill sets to practice even as you're applying, like don't stop innovating, don't stop building, um, don't stop like creating purpose. So that's definitely a route that I would take. You know, if I, um, was told like my internship was canceled for Facebook, but fingers crossed. <laughs> um, and to your point, what you, which you mentioned earlier, thankful for um, the post on GitHub that lists out all of the information and they actually have a Twitter account as well. So that way students who want to anonymously kind of post, then give updates on their internships, um, they can do that there as well. And it actually got um, some pretty good traction. I believe uh, the Wall Street Journal and a few other um, tech sites uh, mentioned the GitHub. So definitely something <laughs> that a lot of students are, are, are utilizing right now in this time. But to your point, like don't stop creating. Um, something that we have found um we've done a uh visit to linkedin and some of these software engineers we spoke with them and we asked like about interviewing process and they said you know what we really like to see candidates who've worked on other projects outside of school like yeah we know that you've you know gotten your degree in cs or engineering or what have you but what did you do on your free time you know what did you do that's interesting or creative and so someone i believe from an engineer from like just works created like a bartending app where it's like you can plug in all the things that you have in your your kitchen and you can make you can find a cocktail to make right so pretty cool because that was something that was a talking point that he was able to utilize in his interviews and something that he holds now near and dear to his heart because he can say that hey i worked on this project not solo with a team but this is this was my 
portion of the work. And this is what I did. This is the problem that I solved. So yeah, don't stop creating, I think is a, a really important um, piece to keep in mind right now. Um, and for you, Cynthia, I have a question. So for those who are closing out the, the internship portion of their lives and looking for full-time work um, and say they are looking to be hired um, from a company you know, such as Cloudera, um, what can they do to kind of stand out? What are some things they should keep in mind when applying? Um, yeah, so this is a great question because I actually helped Cloudera recruit. Um, so I, I've been to... I represent Cloudera at career fairs um, and info sessions and things like that. So I kind of do see that side. Um, so I think the statistic is something like on average, a recruiter spends seven seconds looking at your resume. Um, so, which is unfortunate, but you know, we have a lot of applicants um, and not just us, just across the board. Um, so yeah, as Deanna said, um, you know, focus on the things that make your resume stand out. Um, you know, if I'm going to a career fair, um, you know, the majority of students are going to be taking the same classes. Um, you know, they, you know, so we look for, you know, what projects did you do in these classes? What projects have you done outside of these classes? What student orgs are you a part of? You know, what, um, you know, what did you do at your, at your past internship? Um, and, you know, not just, um, you know, in very general but like what specifically did you work on what technology just differentiating yourself um and i would say you know it's it's hard because um so i think clutter is a bit unique in terms of like what we look for um so you know we we kind of look for very specific backgrounds which is not uh generally the case for most companies but um you know for me it's like it's actually very hard when a student says you know i'm interested in anything like because it's it's actually really hard for me to see where that student is going to fit in with the company. Um, so we actually do um, like student team matching up front, um, which means when you get an offer, you know which, comp which team you're going to be working for. Um, so, you know, something like I'm really interested in machine learning and here is, you know, the projects that I've worked on related to that. Um, here's, you know, my internship experience related to that. That really helps me identify you as a good candidate for that specific team. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know this is very like specific advice for Cloudera, but, um, you know, keep in mind that, you know, every company, uh, you know, is, is going to approach recruiting differently depending on what they're looking for. So, you know, really look at that job description, understand it, um, you know, see, you know, use LinkedIn as a tool, you know, you can, you can use LinkedIn and see what people currently at the company are working on and kind of understand what it you know, what kind of work is being done at the company. So, you know, do your research um, so that you, you know, when you approach a recruiter, you are able to ask informed questions. Um, you know, you can figure out how to present yourself as the best, as a good candidate for that opportunity. Yeah. And I, I kind of echoing off of that, just realizing that everyone has some uniqueness to them and we are all individuals and there is something that makes everyone special so i may be taking i may be in the same software engineering courses as you know johnny but i play volleyball i love volleyball and i love guitars and maybe i can build out an app or build something that is again a talking point to some to speak to my character and speak to what makes me me you know, and that's something that I feel like people will definitely remember. And to also be mindful of your digital shadow, right? So we want to make sure we understand what what we're doing and how it may relate to um, or create the story about you, right? So you want to be mindful of the way that you comment on things, what you comment on, are you, you know, spending as much time on Instagram as you are on LinkedIn? How are you kind of, you know, having these or, you know, kind of engaging with companies, right? Those things matter. So it's, it's really important that you stay consistent throughout the board. And for a lot of the resumes that I've vetted um, in the past, uh, to the point of not being able to spend a lot of time on it, you know, I need to know what are the, what are the, the jump outs, you know, I need to see front and center, right? You know, you don't want to bury the the gold, right? You want the gold really as 
far as at the top as you can because you want to be able to be seen and and not rely on traditional aspects. So there are some who may focus solely on career fairs in person because they say, you know what, I know I'm really good, I'm really charming, I can utilize that in person. Um, when now we're in a space where now that's not an opportunity, that's not an option, right? So figuring out, well, how can I do the same thing and you know apply the same energy online? And, you know, there are still recruiters out there for many companies who will still take your message, right? They'll still, you know, see your message. They'll still respond when they have the, the chance to. But yeah, just being persistent and being consistent, right? There's not just one channel that you can utilize um, to get you that, that job, whether it be an internship or a full-time role. Um, and so before we answer, I do see that we have a few questions um, here in the chat and in the Q&A box. Um, if you guys have any final words of advice or um, suggestions for students, any final words? I just want to say, like, you guys have worked really hard to get to where you are, as I said earlier. So, you know, keep chugging along, um, you know, make the most of the time that you have left as a student, uh, which is something that I say when I go recruit, um, you know, and just have a good time. <laughs> I think like for me, I kind of touched on this uh, throughout the webinar, but um, just stay really flexible and open to opportunities that come by. Um, I would say my best opportunities came when I said yes to just projects that weren't um, like, for example, internships at large companies or just um, like taking on projects that, you know, like really gave back to the community, um, really touched on my own interests rather than just, um, I think like once like target goal I had or like um, just basically being open to opportunities that come by and staying flexible. I think like also that mindset would really help during um, a time period like this, as scary as it may be, um, COVID-19. I would say like, if you stay open-minded and flexible, there's always opportunities out there that you could always be working on, contributing to. And so um, definitely that's like my, my piece of advice. Awesome. Okay, well, we do have a few questions here. And so the first one asks, how do you show the company that you're capable of taking on roles despite not having prior experience? Yeah, I would say, um, so by prior experience, it doesn't, it's not only limited to um, internships at companies or real work experience. It can always just be volunteer work on your campus. Um, you can always be developing maybe some small website for a small club on campus. You could maybe have a project featured on GitHub um, for design. Maybe it's designing collateral for uh, I don't know, like your school's marketing uh, department. Um, so taking on projects like that, um, like I said, there's always opportun like opportunities to work on projects out there. So I would say like um, there's still time. You can definitely look for smaller projects to take on. Um, and having that will definitely, again, like Deanna said, like allow you to really touch on upon that in your interview or when you're networking and talking to recruiters. Um, definitely like uh, your passion will shine through and if you have projects to support that um, that's gonna help you a lot more than just having you know like a couple of internships like listed on your resume yeah and don't be afraid to think hard about about it right so you can be I always like to give hypotheticals but you can be like a sophomore right and you're you're in this internship role and you want to take on a project that may focus on digital marketing or some form of marketing and that's not what your role may call for it's always it's always an option to speak up, right? To say, hey, you know what? I love focusing on these things. I see that there's this project happening. Can I contribute to this in some way, shape, or form, right? And so I could be in, you know, you can be in like a sorority or another student organization, right? And you've handled the social media for that. Maybe you've done the graphics for that, right? Maybe you guys have some type of website that you've built out. That's still useful, you know, experience that you can say, hey, I've done X, Y, Z as of recent, 
this is why I can also help contribute to this project. And it may lead you to being able to work on that project, but I just wouldn't be afraid to think really hard and creative about the work that you've done and to not be ashamed if you don't have all of that experience. The the part of an internship is to also get experience, right? Yeah. And have a you know effective, you know, leadership in in a supervisor, you'd be able to kind of have that conversation and hopefully be able to navigate that that project that you're wanting to to work on. So thank you for that question. Um, Celine, someone asked, do you mind giving a brief background about your major and how you got interested in product designer roles? Yeah, so my major um, at Northeastern is a combined major of computer science and design. So combined major in quotes. Uh, that's not that's not the same as a double major, which um, I envision is 100% of the computer science major and then 100% of design. Um, combined major is 70% of both, like, 70% of computer science, 70% of design. So it's really nice because um, I get to pick and choose what courses I want to take that's tailored to my interests. So if I wanted to, for example, overload my, um, my curriculum on just more computer science courses, I could do that, or I could focus more on design, which is what I'm doing. Um, and so that um, is a really amazing opportunity. I think more colleges should adopt that. Um, adopt that. And, um, and how I got into product design, uh, it was, essentially trying to combine um, my interest in the tech industry as well as just my um, interest in volunteering, getting out there, talking to people. Um, uh, it was uh, like, uh, um, wait, sorry. Wait, sorry. <laughs> just, like, I hear myself. Like, I hear out. myself. Anyway. Anyway. So. <laughs> I think there's like a lag, but um, anyway, so uh, essentially being able to combine my interest as a software engineering question mark with um, just going out there and talking to people that kind of put together in my mind is like design because I get to design um, for technology, but also really understanding from customer research, user research, um, exhibiting like uh, user empathy. And so that's kind of like a segue into how I combined um, my interest and went for product design instead. Okay, awesome. And so both, for both of you ladies, someone else asked, how do you stand out when applying to positions at large firms where it's tough to find a specific point of contact to follow up with? This is a good one. Cause you know, if you're applying for like, I don't know, like Chase or Citibank, it's like, there's so many recruiters, there's so many contacts. How do I know who to reach out to? Um, I would say, you know, if you are able to, uh, you know, be face to face with someone, whether like if that's, you know, at a career fair, at a recruiting event or something, I think that that is probably the best way, um, you know, to say, I've already applied online, I've already, you know, done research about this role, you know, you know, how can I make myself stand out more or, you know, what are, what, what are next steps, things like that. Um, but, you know, in, in, you know, considering that, you can't do those kinds of things right now, I would say um, don't be afraid to uh, cold contact people on LinkedIn. Um, so, you know, look through your network, um, see who you know, um, you know, ask people for uh, introductions or referrals, things like that. Um, you know, the the worst thing that can happen is, you know, they say no or they just don't respond to you. But, you know, if, if you try, someone might, you know, be open to helping you out. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it is hard, um, you know, given that their recruiting is very, is a very huge operation at the companies. Yeah. yeah. Definitely I think like yes. plus one. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, definitely plus one to referrals. And, um, I also kind of face this problem of just not being able to follow up with recruiters, but what I found really helpful is to just know someone who works at that company and to just foster like a really good relationship so that could be um, mentorship or just someone that you catch up with often it could be like a friend um just knowing contacts of, at like a company you want to work for definitely helps a lot because they can then write like a really meaningful referral for you and i've heard that at a lot of companies um especially bigger companies because they receive so many applications and resumes they don't actually look at all of them or they'll strive to do it but i mean they get a lot so it's not like a guaranteed chance that they'll look at yours. Um, but if you do have a referral kind of behind your name, then I've heard that your application is definitely going to be viewed 
um, at least once by a recruiter. So definitely having someone um, to support you and like who works at that company is going to help tremendously. So I would say like networking is huge um, and definitely would recommend um, just, you know, like hitting people up on LinkedIn, really asking them, like, don't pester them, but like, uh, just be really passionate and just um, be really curious and just what they work on. And I would say like, you know, you might come out with a really good mentorship relationship out of that. And so from then on, you can then follow up with them on just, um, you know, how your application's going or um, when recruiting starts, et cetera, like things like that. Yeah. And just to close out that question too, for larger companies, um, it's really about also about strategy, right? So it's like, I know that I'm in, I know that I'm on the East Coast and I know that this company is global. So I want to make sure that when I go in on LinkedIn and I look up this company, that when I type in, I want recruiter or director of this role based off of their title, looking at the details to kind of see like what Cynthia mentioned, like what they've worked on, what they're currently working on. Um, something will kind of give it away. Um, and I'll lead you. You may not find the exact person, but you may find someone in that department that may be able to help you, right? So, you know, it, it's worth a shot to just be very specific in your search when trying to find who that recruiter is or recruiters are. Um, and then we'll take one last question. Um, someone asked, what programming languages do you guys both work with on a daily basis? And how do you prepare for the day at the office slash work from home? Um, so at Cloudera, the majority of our code base is in Java. Um, so that's what I usually work on. Um, you know, it's, it's Java followed by like C++, Python, and a couple of other things. Um, how do I prepare for the day? That's a great question. Um, so Cloudera is a global company. Um, we have engineering mostly based in um in our bay area offices but we also have um, a bangalore office in india as well as an office in uh, budapest hungary so because of the global nature of our company a lot of stuff happens around the clock um so for me i think it's a lot of you know catching up on emails seeing what happened overnight <laughs> um but you know i i really like talking about this because i really love my work um but um, yeah, you know, I think so for, for us, it's like we have um, what are called sprints. Um, so, you know, every week uh, our engineering team sits down and sees what they're going to work on for the next week. Um, and, you know, it's it really varies day to day what your job is like in terms of, you know, am I working on a bug today? Am I working on a new feature? Am I, um, you know, writing up a engineering design doc? Am I, you know, communicating with product management? It's, yeah. <laughs> and I think work from home is just like, you know, making that transition from like, okay, this is my personal life versus like now I'm working um, and, you know, having good work-life balance and that separation, so. Mm -hmm. um, so I personally don't work on uh, programming languages as a product designer. And um, to answer someone's question, I work on software product design. Um, and so it's more of just like kind of vaguely understanding what my engineer's tech stack is. So a lot of like Python, TensorFlow, because I work um, very closely with AI. Um, but for a designer, I would say like the tools that I use the most is Figma. I don't know how Cloudera uh, interacts with designers, but we use Figma. We do a lot of prototyping and a lot of just um, kind of our artboards are on um, that software. And um, that's also how designers collaborate very closely with. Um, and let's see how I prepare for a day at the office slash work from home. So um, when I was going to the office, um, definitely like the first thing in the morning that happens is I do like a daily stand up with my team. Um, so really thinking about what did I do the day before and what I'm going to be doing that day definitely helps me prepare and like also hold myself accountable to what I'm going to be doing. So that definitely helps a lot when I'm working from home because I'm um, having a list of just priorities on what I'm going to be working on and letting my team know um, holds me accountable and like actually, you know, like forces me to ex execute those tasks for the day. Um, and then throughout the day, there's um, some meetings that I will prepare for um, maybe like a few days in advance. Um, so that could be like showing design deliverables, getting feedback, um, speaking with engineers and kind of kicking off a project or a feature. And I would say like that's mainly the bulk of my work. So it's just like 
stand-ups and meetings. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar, but um, at Uncubed, we are remote. Um, and that's one of the really great perks. We were remote prior to uh, COVID-19. And it was my first rem fully remote job. Um, and so I had to learn the hard way. Like people hear remote and they think, oh, I'm going to be able to just like binge watch something on Netflix and have and just keep my finger pad on the you know finger on the pad and I'll be okay when that's not necessarily what you want right so each job and industry is different but there are things that are set up um, at each job that kind of set you up for success so um, for example my team we have weekly meetings so we have a Monday meeting we have a Thursday quick check-in and then all hands on Friday which is really awesome because we do it through zoom or Google Hangouts so we still get to see each other um, and we do have slack channels right so if there are certain departments and certain teams working on certain projects there are specific slack channels that we utilize on a day-to-day um, we have like a daily progress channel so that we can kind of see what everyone is working on. And we do try to have like these things called water coolers. So being able to talk about non-work related items, right? So if you saw this really cool article or really cool recipe that you tried. So those are things that I felt like really helped me. Um, but also just for my personally, being able to set yourself up for the day. So finding a quiet place that you can work work at every day and I personally like to get dressed for the day because if I'm in pajamas then I feel like I'm at home so it's different when you kind of you try a little bit right so making sure you set yourself up close to where you have good connection so that way if you do have to get on a video call you can take it you don't have distractions you're not walking back and forth you know, you don't have the TV blaring. So it's just those small things make, make the workspace all more comfortable, right? Just definitely show up and show out, especially if you're in an internship, right? You have to work, you know, I want to say twice as hard just to show that you're able to work remote and work through different ch challenges. And one of the challenges being remote right now, right? Because no one really has that option. Um, we do have one more question, um, and so sorry that I missed it. Um, someone asked, how do you utilize the time between when you get an offer letter um, to your first day orientation at a company? So what ways did you kind of prepare for that? So I'll start just um, in general. For me, the way I prepared is, one, being as quiet as possible. So for for one, I did work at certain spaces where um, I didn't want to just give it away right away that I was working for a specific company until it was formally announced that the internship program was happening. Um, I have heard horror stories of people saying, hey, guys, I work for Samsung now and I just did, you know, this orientation and they've sent me all my swag and they've rescinded an offer just because that wasn't the time or place and the message was inappropriate. Um, so for me in preparing, I was quiet and I did let myself know, you know, this is, this is the mindset to get into. This is what you wanted. I checked, I would print out the job description, read it front to back and knowing that these are the things that are expected of me, highlighting the things that I'm like, oh, I'm just not so sure in this. I'm not a hundred percent there yet. Um, but these are things that I want to work on and also listing expectations because a lot of jobs, if they do have like a, a huge orientation for a lot of interns, they'll ask you, what are your expectations for this role? What are things you want to take away from this? Right? So being able to have that ready. So that way, when I get there, I wasn't like, um, um, I don't know. Right. And then also making sure that you are, you fit the culture. So if they're casual, make sure that you prepare to be casual. If they're more formal, make sure that you have the items that would help prepare you for success in that way. So, uh, but for you guys, how did you guys prepare? I can talk about internship um, and like the mindset for that. Um, but I imagine that would be different for full time. So do you want to go first, Cynthia? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, 
Yeah, I would say like, don't hesitate to ask, <laughs> like ask your recruiter, ask your hiring manager, um, you know, see if you can meet with your team that you're going to be working with, um, whether that's like, you know, a phone call, video call, like if you're in the area, like just meeting with them in person for like a lunch or something, like just get to know them. Um, again, like do research on what you're going to be working on, um, do research on the company, your product, um, you know, look at you know, read people's LinkedIn, LinkedIn's for like your team um, and see what they've been working on um, to, you know, just, you know, ask if there are things that you can do to prepare, whether that's like reading references, resources, um, if there's anything that you should focus on um, in your like last classes that you have before your internship, um, because the answer really depends, right? Like, you know, some, some teams want to make sure like, oh, like you've, you know, prepared a specific skill set because they utilize that a lot during the internship versus like, you know, be ready to, uh, you know, like go into, go into your internship with like, I mean, I think the, the point is like um, for a lot of companies and um, how they view interns and new grads is like, they want you to be coming in with fresh ideas. So, you know, just be ready for that kind of environment. Yeah, definitely. Um, for internships wise, uh, Honestly, uh, <laughs> one piece of advice I've heard constantly from just recruiters and people in general is to just be excited and bring that excitement to your internship role. So I know um, it's really awesome. Like it's like considered going the extra step if you do research on um, or more research on your product, uh, more research on your team. Um, but overall, I feel like the whole point of an internship is so that students can really learn the, on the job and be really like, I would say like, like a sponge. I've heard that phrase before, but mm -hmm. basically you're there to soak up whatever they want to teach you. And so being, I would say like, um, not committing to too much research and then formulating like a mindset or like a specific workflow on how you want to work, um, is ideal. But I would say like definitely going in and being really passionate and excited about the work that you're going to be doing, um, and just very willing to learn, I would say like, um, can work well, like can work really well too. So don't stress yourself out too much. Um, if it's for an internship, I would imagine like for a full time, like there may be some expectations, but um, just chill and like be really excited. Um, definitely, um, if you are looking forward to an opportunity, then congratulations. Um, and yeah, like that's what my advice would be. Awesome. Okay. Well, guys, I thank you ladies so much for joining us today to kind of share your wealth of knowledge and give your perspectives. Um, so for right now, we're going to go ahead and close out, but I thank everyone for spending this time with us this last hour and change. <laughs> um, we will be uh, sending a pre-recorded uh, post-recording link to those who were unable to watch live. And just so you guys know, and I will also post it to Uncube's uh, student newsletter, but there is a free service that helps students prepare for virtual roles. Um, it's called Inside Sherpa. Dot com. Um, and so I'll, again, send that link out to everyone. But so you guys know, there are different um, channels out there that can help prepare you should you feel like you need additional resources. Um, and at Uncued, we also do have remote work webinars that have already been recorded. So if you do have any additional questions or uh, things that you feel like would help prepare you, um, I'll go, go ahead and send that link as well. But again, thank you ladies so much. Um, I appreciate your time and hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.